The ECG, or also known, known as the electrocardiogram, sometimes called as EKG. We don't use the term EKG because it is actually not very famous, but used in the German language and also the people of the United States, the US people, because they call it electrocardiogram instead of electrocardiogram, which we use term for the rest of the countries. Looking at the headings, the first we have rhythm, rate, axis, waves, PBB bundle branch block, and left and right ventricular hypertrophy. Let's look at the rate first, how to calculate. It is given by the formula 1500 by X, referring to the number of small boxes between the RR interval. Here we have the ECG curve, I'm marking them as QRS. The RR interval, we're going to count the small number of boxes, which is the X, and putting that into formula. Here, we take the RR interval because it refers to one beat, or one heartbeat, or one cardiac cycle, or lab depth. You might ask, why don't we take the PP interval if we can take RR? Because it's not convenient. You see, here, PP interval, it's not very convenient. How RR is in in convenient that it has the pointed edges where we can simply calculate the number of small boxes, putting that into formula. Now, we know that one bit corresponds to X number of small squares, and one small square take about 0.4 seconds. Therefore, one bit will be 0 0.04 times of X small squares. Now, 0 0.04 seconds is actually corresponds to one by X bit. Now, by simple mathematical calculation, we see one second corresponds to this much of value, and 60 seconds because we're going to take for one minute, which will give us the formula this bit, which will be equivalent if, uh, let me get a calculator to calculate this. So, one minute is will be equivalent to about 1,500 divided by x number of bits. So, ta-da, there we are, we got the formula for to collect the rate. Here it is. I hope you find it understandable. In this video, we are going to talk about the how to calculate the rhythm in an electrocardiogram. Before doing so, we have to understand certain terminology. So, what is normal rhythm? The normal rhythm is the sinus rhythm. What does this mean? Let us look. Let us draw the heart and we see that we know that the heart is actually doing its work by uh, electrical potential which is generated in the AV node for it to maintain its function. So the electrical impulse travels in a direction of this. From the AC node to the AV node, then to the bundle of his and the ventricles. Okay, so we know that the left ventricle is a much larger and muscular organ because it has to pump the blood to the rest of the body. So, it is muscular and so the most of the electrical impulses, it, it travels, it, sorry, it travels in towards the left ventricle more than that of the right ventricle. And we know that electrical impulses are nothing but the electrical activity. So, we have the knowledge of physics that electrical Electricity is actually a vector. It has a both magnitude and a direction. So since a maximum amount of electricity is flowing to the left ventricle because it is larger muscular organ, so the vector shifts more towards the left ventricle, which is in this direction. And it is known as the cardiac axis. We will talk about the cardiac axis or electrical axis in my next video about how to determine the axis of an electrocardiogram. For the time being, let's look at the rhythm. So, there are certain conditions that is to be fulfilled in order to determine the rhythm of the heart in an electrocardiogram. Let us look. So, these are the conditions which must be fulfilled if we are to be determined the rhythm. So, let us look at those. The first is the regularity, second, the P before QRS and QRS before Q. I will explain this later what does this mean and third is the P wave should be normal okay let's try to understand so first we are going to check the regularity so how are we gonna do that let us take an ECG as an example and okay so we're going to take a paper and mark with a marker 
every uh, corresponding to every QRS complexes. And we're gonna move this piece of paper like this. Okay? Okay, like this, right. So here we see in the first uh, three QRS complexes, it, w it, uh, it was corresponding exactly with the black lines. But as we move the paper, we see here, okay, this is not coinciding at all. Do you see that? Okay, so what does that mean? It means that the QRX complexes, the every QRS complexes is not equidistant to each other. You can use a ruler or a divider or whatever to say that this is not rhythmic. Okay, or you can also simply count the number of boxes between the QRX complexes to say the, regu the regularity. So here we found that since the three black lines are not corresponding to the QRX complexes, giving us an inference that they are not equidistant from each other. So we're going to say that in an inference that this is, of course, irregular rhythm. Okay. So if you look other way around, or if otherwise, it is regular. What do you mean? Okay, so what I mean is that if the three black lines correspond exactly with the QRS complex as we move forward, it is regular rhythm. Okay, so our first criteria is fulfilled. Now let us see what, okay, let us go to another short topic. So we're going to take a ECG, a rough sketch, and we're going to see here how to check for P before Q and Q before QRS. So it's a simple thing. You just have to see that every P wave is uh, prior to the QRX, and every QRS is followed by a P wave. So. Our second criteria is fulfilled. Now look at a third criteria, which is to check if the P wave is normal. So let us look what a P wave looks like and what it mean by normal. So let us take a small ECG segment and I'm going to just uh, zoom into the P wave. Here I have the P wave and it shows a positive reflection. Okay, there's an interesting video that I'm going to show you, not now, but in my subsequent videos, why does there is positive deflection on ECG? Uh, let me just for the time being just assume that there is a positive deflection. I will tell you later why in my next video. So if the P wave is positive in the leads 1 to AVF as well as V3 to V6, then we are going to say that it is normal as well as we're going to measure the height or in the vertical direction it measures the uh, actually the voltage so if the height is 2.5 millimeter which means it will accommodate two small boxes and a half and in a horizontal direction which is for the duration and if it is for the 0 0.12 second duration then we are going to say the p wave is normal so our third criteria is fulfilled and we're happy now because all the three criteria are fulfilled, so we're gonna just simply find if the rhythm is regular or irregular, like I have shown before. Okay, let me show you once more. Like this method, you remember, right? Okay, so the third is, okay, I was asked this question in my oral, but I couldn't understand this, so I'm making this video now. Okay, so how to determine the rate if you have the irregular rhythm okay because the most important thing if we ask people what are the things that you will see in electrocardiogram or how to read electrocardiogram where we often start with rate but mind you it's technical speaking it's important to say rhythm first because if the rhythm is regular then only you are you can calculate the rate easily like in my previous video but if the rhythm is irregular, so there are certain technical difficulties and it's difficult for us to calculate the rate. So the rate depends upon the rhythm. So we're going to first say rhythm and then rate and then axis and then the BBB and okay, I'll talk about that later, but for the time being. 
So how to determine the rate if it is irregular rhythm? Okay, let's go and see. So take the ECG recording for 10 seconds on late 2. What does that mean? Okay, we're going to turn on the ECG machine on and we're going to wait for 10 seconds so that it makes a recording like this. Okay, so this is a 10 second recording and we're going to calculate how many number of QRX complexes are there in a 10 second recording. Here it is 8, okay, okay, so 8 is the number of QRS complexes for a 10 second recording. So our formula for determining the heart rate is number of QRS complexes for a 10 second recording multiplied by 9. So it is 8 multiplied by 9, okay, I have not shown this in the video, but the heart rate will be 8 multiplied by 9 times which is constant and that gives us space per minute now that was a uh, very awkward because uh, if the if you are given an ECG with not a 10 second recording like for 20 or 15 or even 50 so how are you gonna do that so that is very time consuming and the multiplication of factor is 9 so it's kind of difficult for a medical math student Okay, so let me make it easier for you. This is the method and another method I'm going to show you which is much simpler and I think you're gonna like it. So let's proceed. This is another method to determine for the rate if it is irregular rhythm. So here we take the ECG tracing and like in the previous video we have taken for 10 second recordings but here we're going to take the ECG recording for how much for 30 large boxes mind you not small boxes the large boxes that accommodates about five small boxes okay so we're going to count the 30 small boxes and as same as before we're going to count the number of QRS complexes here it is eight large boxes so our formula is rate equals to number of QRS complexes for 30 large boxes multiplied by 10 did you see that 10 okay in previous one we had the multiplication factor of 9 which makes it hectic kind of here we have the advantage of the factor is 10 and another thing is we have to count the 30 boxes rather than 10 seconds which is much easier so it is 8 multiplied by 10 which is 80 which is 80 bits per minute okay Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video and if you want more, subscribe to my channel. If you have any queries, comments, and suggestions, you can type in my comment section below. If you want to make me any medical videos on any topic, you can contact me in the links in the description below. Or also, you can write to me directly in the content in the next week, in my next video. I will be uploading to how to know about the axis of an electrocardiogram, the right and the left axis deviation. So, till then, see you, goodbye, take care, and don't forget to share this video.